Hello everyone, hope we're all good. A big shout out to KR Couriers and Transport Limited and a big thank you to everyone who likes, shares, comments and subscribes to the All or Nothing podcast with myself, Billy Moore. Okay, so I'm going to take you through the town centre and introduce you to a few people and one young lad in particular called Jay who's 19 years old. 19. You know, he's got a baby face. He's living on the streets. He's living rough. You know, he's living hands to mouth. He's skint. It's just him. He tells me he's not on drugs. You know, he smoked a little bit of weed and, you know, he's found himself in, you know, really unsavory position. You know, let's go and meet him and say hello. Hello, Jay. You all right, mate? So, Jay, you're only 19 years old. You're on the streets. Yeah. You've just, been, you've you've just been telling me your story there. Tell me a little bit about it. So, my name is Jason. Uh, I was born and bred in Liverpool from the age of 0 to 9. Grew up my mum and my three sisters. Went into care at the age of 9 due to my mum having a drug addiction. Was moved down to Shrewsbury in Shropshire and now, because I was over the age of 18, just just over a month ago, I was brought back to Liverpool as I'm going to proceed to Council Trail. I was meant to be given a flat, meant to be given a leave and care grant. Wasn't given nothing. And now I'm currently waiting for the housing and the white chopper services to place me somewhere. But at the moment, because of the current housing situation, They've not managed to find me anywhere to go. I'm on a priority one list. And classes of vulnerable adults. And I'm now walking the streets of Liverpool. You just bumped into me and asked me for a bit of spare change because yeah. you know you need to find yourself a room. Yeah. I'm having to beg on the streets and ask people for money and it's an embarrassing thing to do. You know, a lot of people are quick to judge. A lot of people just walk past you like as if you're invisible and well, as you're a teenager, you're 19 years old, you're on the streets. Have you got any issues with drugs? I've got no issues with drugs. I did have when I was about 16, 17, smoked a lot of cannabis. It sent me out a bit west, I went, went end up getting section put into the hospital. And ever since then, I've, I've kind of just... So, like, have, has anyone started to help you get off the streets? No one's started to help me. I see the white chapel service, they obviously need to come out every day. Basically, just to make sure he's not breathing alive. And give me any updates. Did he, did, he, did he look after you? Not really, no. Um, I've been asking them for a sleeping bag and a phone for the last week and I've had nothing out of it. So how do you contact them? No, what? Have you got no contact number? I've, I've got no way of contacting them. I have to go to the actual White Chapel Centre on Paul Lang's there. So look, if you see James yeah. on the streets, yeah. say hello, give him a bit of time, have a little chat with him. I mean, just acknowledge this kid. Thanks for your time, my Thank mate. You very much. That was Ebby, that's seeing that young kid, 19 years old, on the streets. Couldn't believe it. You know, he approached me asking for this bit of spare change. I thought he's on the black, this kid. When I got speaking to him, listening to his story, I said, are you willing to come and have a little chat? And he said, yeah. Tell me about what's been going on. So, yeah, absolutely sad. 19. What the fuck are you? Hello Dean, how are you mate? I'm okay mate. So we've just been having a little chat off camera, you were talking about this is where you live. Yeah. Right, how you've been moved moved on and on from everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. You can keep moving us on, come give us a picture notice, make us move from one side to the other, and then they can give us another one for another week. If not, they destroy our tents, take it away. They destroy your tents? They take it, they take it, take it away and they'll move it. If we're not in in the morning, they'll destroy it. That's how it is, it's just... They destroy it, they get rid of everything. And where are you from, Cardiff? From Cardiff, yeah. How long... I was coming over to Elgin, and someone was just threatening to throw a place at him. So someone's just threatening to throw a place at you? You get it all the time. You get it all the time. Making, making, it, making their city look a disgrace. You're making their city look yeah, a disgrace? I can't, I can't go into certain places because I'm homeless. And you can't use the toilets, can't do anything. They don't let us do anything. And, then, and what about the White Chapel? They told me I need to be worth sleeping for six months before they can help me. Six months? I've, they, I've done my housing options assessment. They said six months rough sleeping before they can help you. And they, they come out every morning between half past five and seven just to check that we're actually rough sleeping. Yeah. Thanks for your time anyway. Oh, How much have you got to prove to people or to services before you get a roof over your head? Okay, so me here with Eddie. Now, Eddie's in my second book. 
fighting for my life. Yeah, man, yeah, under a different name, <laughs> and it's a lie as well. <laughs> but it's good we didn't know you'd swap it for the red eye, don't you? Yeah. Is it either? Did you enjoy it? No, what the fuck? Not the big army, innit? But obviously, you changed, you changed the name, didn't you? I changed the name, but yeah. it was, uh, but it was I, I was thinking, you fucking swat it. So this is Eddie, Eddie Shard, I've known Eddie for years, and I've fucking used yeah, together. Yeah, tell me about it, yeah. Oh, we have, we have. We have, yeah. No, we don't use no more, though. That's it. The light zones, anyway. Me and I, me and I. That's good, then. Just an habit, mate. Thanks for your time, Eddie. Oh, yeah, your time, Billy. Mad bumping into Eddie then. I used him back in uh, 2017, just before I got clean. So I was living in some, some scrapyard with him on Stone Hill in Anfield. You know, while I was bits getting, you know, sold from this Ken. It was just like using with people that. I didn't know, just the company, and then going back to the house at the end of the day. You know, but Eddie was always a good kid. You know, always looked after me when I was struggling. It's always nice to, you know, you pay them people who go to you, and I always do that. I never forget the ones that have looked after me. There you go. Anyway, thanks for watching. Take care.